Guys, what's going on? It's Joe from Gadgetry Tech, and today I'm going to review the Epos H3 Pro Hybrid wireless gaming headset. It's a lot to say. There's a lot to talk about. So with that being said, I'm going to put chapters in the description below. So look in the play bar, look in the description. If there are only certain parts you care about in this review, by all means navigate to that. I'm not here to waste your time. I'm not running the channel to make money. I do this because I'm a nerd and I like testing and playing and talking about cool stuff like this. If at the end of the review you think this is the right headset for you, as always, I will put a link in the description to help you buy it. In this case, it'll likely just be an Amazon affiliate link, just a generic link. Um, we don't get any special kickbacks. It's just to help support the channel because I do buy a lot of these. This headset was sent to me for review. Uh, Epos did not solicit any specific feedback or criticism or positive remarks to be said. It's very open. Uh, you will see in this review we always maintain integrity. So. Anyway, with that being said, let's dive in. Now the Epos H3 Pro Hybrid retails for an eye-watering $280. And obviously that's a lot for a lot of people. It puts it in a very stiff competition because there's a lot of models you can choose from. So um, I'll get into all that. Now you, you can get this in three colors. You get this gorgeous green, which I am a massive fan of. I think the green is probably my favorite color wash just because it's so unique. Um, it's a really, really pretty green, and especially even in person. Um, so I like the way it looks. Now you can also get it in their Sebring Black, which is what it launched with last year. It was only available in that color, and that's more like a dark navy blue. You can also get it in white, which I haven't had, but I've reviewed the H6 Pro in white before, and I, I like that headset a lot, and the white looks great. I think this would look very similar. Now battery life is rated for about 30 hours with normal use. That's using the wireless adapter at a good listening volume. You can get down to the low 20s if you're using active noise canceling, and then it gets into the high 30s if you're basically just using this as a Bluetooth headset. On that note, the microphone is detachable. Little magnet, look how cool that is. So if you are using this as a Bluetooth headset, just pop this off. It comes with this little cool plate in the box. Let's get that in a focus there. This It's pretty basic looking, but it's magnetic and it just snaps right in. And then now all of a sudden it is a non mic boom gaming headset. Now what's really cool about this is it actually has a microphone hole on that side. So um, even if you don't have a boom, you have a fallback mic so you can take Bluetooth calls with this if you are on the go and using this on the Bluetooth headset. So that's pretty cool. Now, as far as other specs go, it has 40 millimeter drivers. It's rated for 20 to 20,000 Hertz. That's pretty common with a gaming headset. That doesn't tell you what it sounds like. That just tells you their measured frequency response. Um, Epos has a very narrow tolerance as far as a decibel swing on frequency response. So it's rated for 20 to 20,000 at plus or minus three decibels, which is pretty good. That's very uh, tight and what you typically want to see. Now it charges with USB-C on the bottom. That USB-C cable that's included is quite long because you can actually use this as a USB-C gaming headset, which I like. Now it fully, from an empty battery, it will fully charge in two hours or less. Considering you get a 30 hour play time, if you do the math, that means a 15 minute charge can get you multiple hours of gaming pretty easily. As far as the rest of the buttons go on the front side here, you get the power button, you get that little, uh, that shiny black piece that you see between the power button and the USB. Uh, C connection is your LED. That's so you can see the power status. When it's charging, it does go from green to yellow to red. And when it's fully charged, it won't tell you that. It'll just say greater than 80% battery life left. And then it warns you when you're at 60 and then they get down uh, 40 or less. Um, it really lasts a long time. I think they were a little conservative on the battery life because I never, it never died early. I actually got beyond what it was rated for, unlike some others, which tend to die a little bit prematurely. Now on the other side of the headset, you have a dial and a couple buttons. So that's your volume wheel. It's smaller than the H6 Pro, which I absolutely love, but it's still easy enough to operate with one finger. It just takes a little getting used to. I wish the knob was slightly larger, but it is what it is. Now you get a couple buttons on this side. You get active noise canceling switch and a Bluetooth uh, button. When you turn it on, Bluetooth is enabled by default. So if you've already paired this to your phone and you're planning on using it with a USB connection, just assume that it's going to try to connect to your phone. And if it doesn't after a while, it'll give up, but it will automatically establish that so you can have both connections. Now on that note, I have to say this now, so I do not forget because it's important. This simultaneously connects, but only plays one source at a time. Now it said in the manual that Android support only, but it works the same way to me on my Android device and my iPhone. Um, if I play stuff on Android or iPhone through Bluetooth, and if I'm playing music, for example, 
It does not like my wireless connection to my console or my PC. It somehow tries to play both sometimes. It's not like it's exclusively choosing to play one, but it gets staticky and screechy like I'm having connection issues. It's not meant for simultaneous Bluetooth connection to two devices at once as far as listening to both at the same time. So I just want to point that out. Now it does seamlessly handle one at a time better than some other headsets. So if you stop playing your game or you pause it and the game's quiet, then you start playing something on your phone, it'll start playing something on your phone. If you do take a phone call, it kills your USB connection routes to the phone call. Calls are actually crystal clear on this too. So I think the Bluetooth quality is excellent. I just want to stress that you cannot use both at the same time. Lastly on that note, the aux cable that's included, if you want to use this as a wired headset to a controller for example, that does support simultaneous Bluetooth. So if you're playing on a PlayStation or on an Xbox and you want to actually hear your Bluetooth audio, use the cord, you can still benefit from the digital signal processing inside because aux, the headset has to be on, so it will do its whole custom EQ tuning. It actually sounds very similar to wireless then you can benefit from the simultaneous Bluetooth. So it's, I'm just throwing that out there so you know what your limitations are. And if you're okay with that, I think you'll be happy with the other stuff we're gonna talk about. Now it's an ePost product. So in terms of build quality and comfort, there's a lot to like. Now I just wanna show you something real quick. I took the microphone off earlier. If I press in on that little plate, you can see how it rocks out. That is basically there to help make it easier to remove the plate. So you're not trying to you know, dig a fingernail into it or anything like that. But again, going to sound quality, this magnet snap, by the way, I mean, it's it's a strong magnet. Let's see if I can do it. It holds the weight of the headset, even though it's detachable. Not bad. So um, anyway, there's no creaks. There's no weird things going on. It's very flexible. It feels solid. Um, as far as comfort goes, it's not, it doesn't rotate flat, which I, I love it when headsets can swivel and lay flat on your neck. But the clamp force isn't crazy strong, so it's not squeezing your neck too hard if you really needed to. The rotation is excellent though. If you look at the way the ears uh, cups pivot, you get up down or pivoting up and down. You get rotation left and right. So you get a really nice adjustment. And I wanna point this out because these are the little things that you can't see on spec sheets. This doesn't take a lot of effort to do, which means when I put it on, and let's stretch it out a little bit, they naturally conform and make an amazing seal. This is one of my favorite things about the H3 Pro Hybrid is how good the headband and mounting system is. One, the headband is metal, so like a lot of other nice EPOS products, it's built extremely well. Um, but that seal is what gets you your base response. That seal is what makes it feel comfortable on your head because the weight and pressure is done evenly. The other thing I like about EPOS headsets is they don't have a progressive uh, clamp force. It's fairly linear. What that means is this has a similar weight to this. It's not gonna drastically Im increase the tension on my head. So people with larger heads will appreciate that because when you open this up, the clamp force is still fairly moderate. It's really just enough that's necessary to get a good seal and still be comfortable. Now, because the ear cups are fairly plush, these are very soft memory foam ear cups. They are very, very comfortable and they have enough give where you can wear glasses with comfort and that's aided by the fact that these don't have an incredibly strong clamp force. It's, it's on the medium side, but I think medium, it's an average, I guess, so it sounds stupid for me saying medium is right, but it really is. You don't want something that's so loose that it's falling off your head. You don't want something that's so tight that it feels like a bear is trying to, you know, trying to squeeze your head in. Now going further into the ear cups, there's some things I like and don't like. So I'm gonna pop it off because I wanna show you something. The ear pads themselves. This is my one of my favorite designs Epos has for ear pads as far as the material layering goes. You have the leatherette on the outside. You have this suede, like really soft fabric material on the inside or on the surface area that touches your head and the inside is this perforated sport fabric. And that perforated fabric actually does modify the way the sound is. So I'm assuming it has a lot to do with that. It also helps a lot with breathability because it can let some of that heat radiate out inside the pad in the cushion itself. So it's a really good combination of materials because you get the benefits of a pretty good seal without as much of the extreme heat that a full leatherette or PLU 
uh, material would give you. So this is gonna hold up extremely well over a long period of time. Now you may be wondering why I popped the ear pad off and that's because I wanna show you one of the only things I'm not a huge fan of with the ear pad and it's exclusive to the H3s and not the H6s. They're smaller. The H6 Pro is actually a bigger ear pad. So if you're concerned about ear comfort and you have large ears, you may wanna consider the H6 Pro. It's better suited for that. If I put this on my ear, you can see it barely fits my ear. Now I can feel, when this is on and it sandwiches in, it's gonna compress a little bit. And when it compresses, this gets thicker. So I wanna show you that. You can see it kinda, of, let's see if I can get that in focus. See how it gets a little wider? So it looks pretty much fine when I put it on, but when you put pressure, it's basically expanding to fill around my ear. And I feel that just a little bit on the back top section of my ear. Now I wore this for as long as I could in, a, in to an extent where I don't normally wear headphones or headsets for multiple hours because I like to get up, take breaks and do stuff. But I went six hours straight and two hours in, I was starting to feel a little bit of that discomfort back here, but it never got so bad where I had to take the headset off. And after that, it actually seemed to improve. I don't know if I just got used to it or not. It was noticeable, but it wasn't a deal breaker to me. Again, I just want to point out these things because it's the stuff you can't see on the spec sheet. Now, as of right now, there's no pad that I know of you can switch to. It could change, um, but this is, again, for this size, because you're stuck with this size anyway, this is one of my favorite pads Epos has ever made. I don't think a lot of people are gonna look to swap this because it's seriously so good. So give that pad a shot. Now, the headband comfort's actually excellent as well, and it has this little notch right in the center here. And what's cool about that is, one, it helps with uh, hanging a headphone. So if you have a headphone stand, this helps make sure it doesn't crease over time. But it, anytime you have a little dip in the center, it helps relieve some stress or, or pressure point in the center of your head. It distributes the weight more and it's a lot more comfortable. All right, now I'm talking to you on the H3 Pro microphone. Now this does not come with a pop filter. It has an integrated screen to help with plosives a little bit. Just make sure that you're not putting the mic so close to your mouth where it's picking all that up. Whether you flip it up slightly or try to bend it and pull it away, that will help with it as well. So I wanna show you the Epos Gaming Suite while I'm talking to you on the mic, because this is a great opportunity for me to turn around and you still be able to hear me. Okay, so as I show you the software, I'm just gonna stick to talking on the H3 Pro hybrid microphone. Now, I am on the microphone setting screen, this little person here in the bottom where it says microphone. This is where you can adjust and custom EQ your voice on the headset. Now this software is obviously free. It's just a lightweight download. It's like 20 megabytes. So now I am on the warm preset and it does boost the bass. It emphasizes the bass quite a bit. As far as the voicing goes of the microphone, this suits my voice a little bit better. How, however, I'd likely uh, customize this own EQ. You can't choose which frequency you adjust, but I like the fact that you can at least make your own. And then clear is gonna take away a lot of the bass and open up the top end a lot. It, I guess it depends on what kind of sound is important to you or what kind of voice you have. So I would experiment here and you can record and play it back or use your you know, Windows voice recorder if you want to do that. And then when you go into custom, naturally it's flat and you can just make your own adjustments and boost bass a little bit. If you want a warmer profile, you know, I tend to have a, a little bit of a harshness in this region. So maybe I wanna pull that down and then open up the top. So I still get some clarity, but I still get some warmth. And just like that, you can make your voice sound a little bit better. And I think for a wireless mic, the transmission's good. Obviously with the gain, you can boost the mic. I think the microphone sensitivity is excellent on this. So as you can tell, I'm not boosting it at all. I'm using the default Windows gain. Side tone is how much you can hear yourself speak. Noise gate is how much noise you can block in the background, which I have enabled right now. So if I open it up completely, now I'm gonna have a little bit more natural sound. I should get a little bit louder and you may hear some background noise. So I'm gonna start typing on my keyboard. That's what I sound like. And I'm gonna set the noise gate to, let's just go for, I don't know, 50-ish percent. So now I'm at 50. I still sound pretty natural. I think it still picks up some of the keyboards. So we're gonna go a little bit higher. Let's go to, I don't know, Let's go to 75. You can still hear me speaking, but it should reject the background noise more. So let's see. And now I can keep talking and I was still typing. So if that was silent, I was typing just as loud as before. So I'm gonna drop this back down cause I'm typically in a quiet room and I don't like to shout too much. And then noise cancellation, the way this one works, it's basically an on off switch. And I found that when you enable it, it really, um, 
it's kind of like their own intelligent background noise filtering. I didn't think this was too consistent, so you can try it, but um, that's up to you. All right, so I'm just going to set my voice back to off as far as the voice enhancer goes, so we have a nice, flat, clean tone. My noise gate's in the 20% area. So I want to show you the settings real quick. This, the text is really small. I'm blowing this up for the screen. But you can uh, enable notifications. You can click Show on Startup, and it'll boot with this open when you first turn it on. Your auto sleep is basically an on-off switch, so unfortunately you can't adjust the timer. And then the Smart button, which is basically what when you press your power button once, you can enable or disable surround sound. Or you can cycle through your presets, which I really like. Uh, so depending on uh, what you'd prefer to use, that makes it easy there. Going into the EQ. Now I'll post a picture of this with all of the um, decibel changes I did. This is my tune and I absolutely love the sound quality, but I'm getting ahead of myself. But you can adjust the slider on all of these and make it sound exactly like you want. You, there are a few presets built in. You have music, which is uh, fairly bright. That has like more of a V shape. You have movie, which is very similar to music. It boosts the mid range a little and it enables your virtual surround processing. You can change how strong the surround processing effect is. So you start with stereo, enable 7.1, and then change the reverberation if you like that. I'm not a huge fan of that, but at least they give you that option. And then eSport treble is a massive cut to the bass, and it boosts the highs, again, just to give you more detail without any of the, the noise possibly drowning that out or making it harder to pinpoint things. Lastly, if you hit the plus sign up top, you can create your own EQ presets. Uh, and so I'm going to type one called Hello World and it's just that easy. And now from there, if I switch to Hello World, I can customize it because it's ba I cloned basically the old version. Let's do something crazy here. And then if I go to switch, it's gonna ask if I wanna save it. So I'll just hit confirm, go back to Hello World, and there we go, I have my custom EQ. So it's pretty easy to set up. Now this software did not work originally when I first upgraded to Windows 11. My upgrade broke it. And as of May 30th, a new update came out that fixed this and it works beautifully for me. I have no issues. I've done tons of reboots and it works amazingly well. All right, and just real quick, this is what I sound like on Bluetooth. This is pretty normal to subpar, I guess. When you compare it to leading Bluetooth headsets, it's not bad, but it's not uh, anything to write home about. Now the sound quality is probably my favorite thing to talk about with the H3 Pro uh, Hybrid because it sounds so good out of the box. And I do love having EQ software, things to enhance your experience and tweak things. But what I hate is having to do that because there's something wrong with the way the headset sounds out of the box. And what I love about the H3 Pro Hybrid is it's, it has to be one of the best tuned wireless gaming headsets out of the box. And I know that's a bold statement because there's some really good stuff out there. I'm not gonna sit here and, and name drop the top five wireless gaming headsets out there. But for most people, this has to be up there for sound quality because it has really good bass, it's very smooth, and the vocal range is so clean and accurate. Just to give you an example, in music, by the way, if you are like 50-50 on music, let's say you're buying this so you can work and do conference calls during the day, and you want a good quality mic, got it. Good comfort, check. Then you want to listen to music in between calls. This is where this thing just kicks so much butt because the bass is so, so good. And when you listen to, um, like for example, Horrence Andy, he has a song called Try Love. It's like a reggae song. Has very deep, gorgeous bass on that song. His vocals that cut through on it and they have the highs. It's just, when it all comes together just right, um, it on a good sounding headset or headphone, it makes a massive difference. And if depending on what headset or headphone you have, if you get this, try to find that song, Horrence Andy, try love and damn <laughs> because it really exposes a lot of other headphones and this is again without EQing it now when I did my minor uh, tweaks to take it to another level um, it's just great how good of music you can hear uh, how good the music can sound which you can hear on this and it works on all genres now I wish the headset got a little bit louder it gets like this volume at max is where I would like 90% to be. It doesn't need to get much louder, and on a loud song, it's too loud. On a loud video game, max volume's too loud. But on certain things, if it's a little quieter, you may find that you wish you had just a little bit more juice, but that's just me nitpicking. As far as gaming goes, so uh, this sound quality is very easy to listen to at louder volumes because, and I've said this a lot, because some new headsets are really getting the EQ down a little bit better than what they used to be. Um, 
these have a slight lift in the highs, just, just a little bit. It's not a lot, and it's not like the whole thing gets lifted. They do some funky stuff. You can kind of see it on my chart over there, the high frequencies. Now, that's not the most accurate uh, headphone measuring rig, but it gives me a ballpark to what I'm hearing. Um, but the bass is lifted slightly, and then it's really, really flat in the mid-range, and that's where um, the accuracy of voicing comes from. When, the, when you're playing a video game, you don't want the video game to sound like everything's in a tin can or I'm doing this and you see how it changes the way my voice sounds? It's almost annoying. Cheap headsets or poorly tuned headsets have that effect. It's boosted too much in like the three to 4,000 hertz range. And these don't do that. They're just, they're so damn good. And again, because of that extra bass and the way the highs are with the detail, it works on everything. When I'm playing my racing games, I loved it. I play a lot of Gran Turismo on this particular headset because I actually found it to be extremely comfortable. And I don't like dealing with software. It's nice not having a base station. You have this tiny little dongle. Let me see if I can grab it. And you can see how small the transmitter is. So it's just nice to be able to plug in and just play. And that's huge. Now, as far as the sound stage goes, I was impressed by this. Usually, closed backs aren't going to give you a really vast sound stage. The best sounding sound stage headset I've ever heard is the BZR Model 1. But that's 350 and it's an analog only headset. They put a lot into soundstage. This was surprising on how open it felt. Now I think the best wireless version I've heard on soundstage is the new Nova Pro that just came out. However, the tuning on that isn't as good. So if soundstage isn't your only thing, and what I mean by that, by the way, is if you were to close your eyes and you heard sounds coming from around the room, how far do you think that object is? How far can the headset make it sound like it is in your virtual space in your head, your holographic space. And these do an exceptional job at really getting it out there. Some of the other headphones, which can sound good, can um, just have a very closed off, very claustrophobic sound. Everything sounds like it's coming from the center of your head or just in this little box. These air it out a little bit, but you still get great sound quality tuning with that. So. I think why I love the sound of these so much is because they balance the sound quality with bass, the mids, and the highs, and you still get exceptional sound stage, which helps you with the immersion and competitiveness for things like first person shooters or actually feeling like you're in the environment you're playing in. So here's where it gets tricky, and I have a lot of competitive headsets around me right now. There's a lot of good headsets out there for gaming that also offer other advanced features, Bluetooth an advanced DAC, you want multiple sources at the same time. Maybe you don't want a boom at all and you want beam forming microphone technology or active noise cancellation. There's just so much out there and I'm not gonna say that anyone next to me is better or worse than this because what's the craziest thing to me is I haven't found the perfect headset. I've tried almost everything I can get my hands on. There's pros and cons to every headset. So I'm only showing these because I want to kind of set the expectation that there's no one headset that's perfect for everyone. I just try to show you what's different or unique or better about each model I cover to help you decide what you think is perfect for you. I think, in my opinion, the H3 Pro Hybrid, with its faults, still is an incredibly competitive headset because to me it is still comfortable. The mic is still on the, the upper tier as far as I'm concerned. And again, the sound quality out of the box, a lot of people don't want to mess with software or do any of that. You plug in the dongle and you just hit play, and that's where this excels. Now, interestingly enough, the noise cancellation actually works pretty well on this. It does change the bass a little bit. I actually found that some of the bass got more emphasized and other parts got pulled down. So it just depends on, I guess, what you're listening to. It may sound like you have more or less bass. Overall, it wasn't as detailed or vibrant sounding as with it off. So if you want the best possible sound quality, just leave it off. However, um, even though I'm a huge audiophile nut, I don't always need to have the best sound quality depending on what I'm listening to. So when I put these on at night, you know, my computer was rendering a different video I was working on. So naturally my fans are going crazy. I just want to relax and play a game a little bit while I wait. So I put these on, I turn on ANC. I'm able to keep the volume fairly low on this headphone, like, you know, 30% volume. Enjoy my driving game, again, Gran Turismo, but I don't hear any of the fan noise of the stuff in the background. And it was so much more relaxing to play. So in the past, 
I wasn't a huge fan of active noise cancellation on gaming headsets. It, it didn't, it wasn't enough to get me so excited where that just had to be the one I got. But I see the benefits for situations like that and it really does change the way you can play. Now this does not have transparency mode, which means it's not using the microphones to send audio back into the headset. So if you want that um, environmental awareness factor, these have pretty good noise isolation. You're not gonna hear a lot what's going around you even with the ANC off. And if it's on, it's even harder. There's just, that's just the way they are. Pop one off your ear if you have to hear what's going on around you, but that's the only way. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning of this, I use this headset a lot. Probably why my review is so damn long, because I know I was gonna talk too much again. But um, there's a weird thing this does with audio delay. It doesn't have latency. It's a low latency headset, but it actively sleeps like after 10 seconds or five seconds of not getting sound. It it temporarily suspends the amp on the headset to save battery life. What happens is you hit pause on a show. Let's say you're watching some on YouTube. You hit pause. You spend 30 seconds, you know, getting a snack or whatever. Who knows how long. Hit play. You don't hear the sound right away. It takes like two or three seconds, about two seconds. Then the sound starts coming in and it's in sync. It's just those first two seconds we're sending and this headset was just asleep. There's no way to turn that sleep mode off. If this is connected to Bluetooth on your phone, even if your phone's not playing anything, just the fact that it's connected, it keeps it from going to sleep. So what I found is if I was doing anything that was latency sensitive, like doing my video editing where I constantly play and pause as I'm making my little edits, I just left the Bluetooth connected and I never had latency issues. Otherwise, if your phone's not connected, you have to deal with that. It's just a weird gremlin that it does. I don't know if that'll get fixed in a firmware update later, but again, I'm just trying to be as honest and open as I can. All right, so at the end of the day, it's time to decide if this is the right headset for you. Now, I knew this was gonna be a long review, um, and I'm sorry again, but thank you so much. Everyone's always been so kind about long reviews because they like details, so you got it. Um, I don't think this is the right headset for everybody. However, I think there's a lot of people that would love to have this headset and enjoy it when they own it. Because like I said, if I'm just playing at night and I'm tired, which lately I've been busy, so I've been tired, I like just being able to plug it in and enjoy my sound and not have to deal with Bluetooth app on my phone to fix it or custom EQing and doing all these weird tricks to get it to work. The wireless connection was actually great. So I could just plug it in and play and I had no problems. And I think if you get past a couple, you know, it depends how, how big those gremlins are. If you need a larger ear pad because you have larger ears and you're concerned, you know, there's different headsets. The H6 Pro is bigger. If you don't like that latency issue and you don't want to deal with lack of simultaneous Bluetooth, you know, that's just the way it is. There's other options to choose. But for the things that are great about this, and ultimately, I think the comfort is phenomenal, um, but the sound quality seriously out of the box is the best thing this has going for it. It really easily rivals anything from two to three hundred dollars. I don't think anyone's gonna hear this and say, no, that sounds terrible. It really sounds incredible. It's a great balance of sound. I like the comfort, I like the build quality. It's super easy to use. And uh, anyway, that about wraps up the review. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I have uh, some of those headsets you just saw. Obviously we haven't released the review yet, so it's coming. So make sure you subscribe and stick around for that. And uh, I've mentioned this a few times. I'm going to be moving to a new studio in a few weeks. I, I'm, it's finally almost done, so get ready and uh, stick around for that because I have some exciting stuff coming out this year. Thank you, as always, for the support, and I will see you next time.